It's a happy new year and it's your birthday. Yes, it is. We ready? You're ready. Well, welcome to the Gospel According to Kennison, and I am your host. I am the man, Bill Kennison, and I am excited to be here. Sherry, I'm a year older than I uh, last time they seen me. Yes, you are. That's right. Today is my birthday. Today. Celebrate the day. Anthony Golden says, Happy Birthday and Happy New Year. There we are. I can depend on Anthony. Jeff McLaughlin is watching. I was wearing his uh, sweatshirt this weekend, actually. Uh, yes, you were. Jack Friedman. Jack Friedman. He said, Like and subscribe to the Gospel According to Kennison YouTube page. Yep. Yep. Jerry Nicholson, Happy Birthday and Happy New Year, Bill. And a Happy New Year to the Nicholson family. Glad to have them on board. And Jack Friedman says, happy birthday. Oh, after everybody else did. Jeff McLaughlin says, happy birthday, dapper one. Dapper? Sure, I'm dapper. You da and you fixed the tree, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope the Joe is on there. Sharon Stein, good morning. John Lutz, happy birthday, he's saying. You know, John, how long have I known John? 25, 30 years? No, not that long. Probably about 15 Mm, well, know. quite a while. Yeah. Do you know that every year since I've met him, he has called me at midnight on New Year's Eve. Every year that I've known him. Yes, he, he has not missed a year, and he called last night. We were at Ginger's, and sometimes he's called when we had shows at, at the Grove and everything else, but uh, that's my friend. That's Derek, my friend, John. Derek Kustris says, happy birthday. Travis Jennings, happy birthday. Travis happy. said that I was his favorite pastor. Well, that's an honor. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Kathy and Bob Henry, Merry Christmas. We've known them a long time. Yes. There's John still... Lutz says, 19 years. 19 years. See, Sherry, you said 35 years. No, I said 30. Oh, Okay. But it's... Well, I didn't know him when Sam was alive. Happy birthday from Danny, Danny James. Danny James. And happy... Oh, he's telling me happy birthday. Yes, he's oh, telling okay. me happy birthday. Yeah, I about to say happy birthday to Danny James. And, uh... Well, we've had quite a uh, week. Misty Soper says, Yeehaw! Happy birthday! Happy New Year! What did the Yeehaw have to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my Lord. I love Misty. I love Misty. She's a sweetie. Uh, oh, well, we've had quite a week. We've had a week. Yep, let's see. Last last week at this, on, on this day, a week ago, we had Christmas. Mm -hmm. And now we've had New Year's. We had New Year's Eve last night. But we did not drink any alcohol. No, we had. Well, we're not drinkers. That's, no. that's the main reason. I don't care if I... Somebody did or not, but... Uh, but the, ci the cider was good, the sparkling cider. Yes, it was. Delicious. Very, very good. And we had, uh, actually, we had Scarlett and a bunch of her friends at the New Year's Eve slash birthday party um, that Ginger gave us over to her house. And, uh, Sherry, every year I get King Crab from Alaska, Nate Thomas, and he sent him again this year. And I never thought about it. I should have called him a couple weeks ago. Go, why don't you come down and have some king crab with me? It was delicious. Sherry made the, I mean, Ginger and, and Sherry, they made the uh, the crab and then we had steak. and. Uh, Ginger and Devin did it all. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And they had our little grandkids there. But yes. uh, And Finnegan even gave you some of his dinosaurs for you. Well, I about day. fell over, Sherry. Yes, because he don't give up. No, he gives nothing. He gives nothing. I asked for some of his popcorn. No. But then he turns around and says, here, I'm going to give you all these dinosaurs for your birthday. But I got a feeling he was just getting them over here so they would be here for him to play with. My, he, he's pretty quick like Oh, that. yeah, 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 yeah. He's, 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 he's slick. He is slick. And then uh, we had friends here from California, Dave and Lisa. And I'm not wearing it, but they bought me a Yellowstone you wore it last shirt for my birthday. And uh looks great. 
Matter of fact, I'm trying to get through this program because they got the marathon going on right now. You've seen them all. I know. I have several times now. Several times. Yellowstone. But, Happy uh, New Year, Mark and Susie Phillips. I love Mark and Susie Phillips. And I'm going to uh, give a lesson today along the New Year's. She changed my life. I didn't, I didn't used to do this stuff. I figure God's word was more important than a, than a special message for a holiday. But here I am. Here I am. I've been beat down. Beat down. And we went live last night, too. You know, I'm not real good at the lives yet, but as far as talking. Well, I think you kind of went live. I was, yes. I was eating crab at the time. Crab legs. And we just had a fun, it was just a fun night. We danced around the house. Yes, we did. Played with the kids. That's what it's Went out about. and set off all the uh, fireworks. In fireworks. The it's supposed to be illegal, I think. No, they're not illegal. Oh, well, I love, you got to love Texas. I came from California, $1,000 fine. I don't know if they ever really ever find anybody, but $1,000 fine if you were shooting off fireworks. Good morning, Penny Flory. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. I haven't talked to you. I did send you a couple texts. Misty Soper said, I loved your video last night. Thank you, Misty. Penny says, happy birthday. Well, thank you. And I have got, well, you've got my, my phone, but I have so many messages. I haven't even started... To, and it isn't because I'm, they're not important to me, but there's so many. It's going to take me a while to, to read them. them. He loves reading them. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. And okay. here we are. First year, first day of the year. And I want to, I want to tell you how to have a great year. You folks have been waiting for some of this. We just went through, some of you are going to go through, I went through maybe the toughest Year of my life this past year. Well, then it's time to have a great year. Let's have a great year. 2023. Let's make it a great year. When I was when I was uh, putting this lesson together, I my memory went back and I remember sitting in my office and and going through this lesson and laying out the notes I wanted to say. And I remembered an experience I had with my dad. I think I remembered almost every New Year's. And uh, my dad was a preacher. He was a man's man, what you call a man's man. Strong, sturdy, forthright, lovable. In every sense, just a great guy. Not just because of uh, he was my dad. But he was, he was just a, he was a great person. Well, on this occasion, he was at his desk on the last day of the year. I'm sure getting prepared for a New Year's Eve service. I spent the first half of my life, I think, on New Year's Eve in church, on New Year's Eve services. I think, uh, I think the year, uh, it was 1966, if I'm not mistaken. I was 17 years old. He was writing a letter, and at the top of the letter he wrote, December 31st, 1966. And I was just sitting there. I just loved being in his presence. But he turned around to me and he said, do you know that that is the uh, last time in 1966 that I'll write that date? 1966. So I asked my dad, I don't even know why it came into my mind, but I asked my dad, how long do you think I will live? And I remember my dad telling me, who knows? God is the only one that knows. God knows. Then he added something, and I want to really put an emphasis on this for you. He added something. I hope you live a long time. Then he said, I'm not as interested in how long you live as I am in whether you amount to something while you do live. What a statement. He said, I don't 
I hope you live a long time, but I'm not as interested in how long you're going to live as I am in whether you amount to something while you do live. Now that's quite a statement. At year's end, that's, that's quite a statement at any time, but at year's end, that's quite a statement. And at a New Year's beginning, I want to ask you something. Do you amount to something? Do you amount to something? Are you and I going to do better in the upcoming year than we have in the, than we've done in the past? I remember my brother Sam's funeral there in uh, Tulsa. We had two services. We had a memorial service there in Hollywood for his Hollywood friends. And then we had our church funeral service in Tulsa there at our parents' church. And it didn't surprise me because I know how preachers are, but we had all kinds of preachers there. They just wanted to see what I was going to say at Sam's funeral. Because he had been a preacher for seven years, even though none of these fellas ever, ever helped him out. But he'd been a preacher and he knew, they all knew him. And they knew when he became famous as a comedian. And I remember at that service, looking out at a bunch of hypocritical, judgmental preachers in the audience that I no, didn't approve of Sam's lifestyle, and, and I don't care. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care if they approve of it or they didn't approve of it. But I remember while I was up speaking, I said, Sam made a statement with his life. Sam made a statement with his life. And then I did something. I challenged them to make a statement with their life. I want to challenge you this morning. On January 1st, 2023, I want to challenge you this morning. And I want to challenge you to make a statement with your life. It's, it's, it's time to quit just going through life. And get knocked to and fro by different things in life. It's time to make a statement with your life. Ezekiel 3 and 26, we'll read a scripture so we feel religious. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. Make a statement with your life. Now, what Ezekiel said is, if the old heart and mind do not have the right attitude, if the old spirit is dull and uninspired, then we need to have a new mental attitude. Let's make up our mind today. Let's get a new mental attitude. Whatever we're going to be and do in the new year, we must be excited about that prospect. And that we will be filled with enthusiasm for the coming year. I don't know about you all. I get up in the morning excited. I get up in the morning waiting, just waiting to do stuff. You see, there is one great thing that everyone has. I don't know one person who hasn't got it. Everybody has this. Everyone possesses it. What is it? It is life. Everyone, you have it. Everyone has it. You are alive. What a privilege to be alive. I had somebody ask me last night. Said, uh, man, you're piling the years on. You're 74 now. And you know what I told him? I said, you know what? I count it a privilege. 
There was a lot, a lot, a lot of people that I knew, even in this past year, that didn't get to see 74. I not only get to see it, I'm vibrant. I look, I look forward to it. It's a privilege that's not given to many, and I treasure that as a privilege. What a privilege to be alive. So let us anticipate as we move into the new year, uh, what we are going to have in beautiful experiences. Let's just anticipate it. Some of that which we've never had before. We're going to experience things in this coming year we've never experienced before. Some of you think it's going to be the same old stuff, but it won't be. If you have a new heart, and if you have a new spirit within you, enthusiasm, excitement, that's what comes from it. That is the mental attitude you have to have as you move into the new year. You've got to have that enthusiasm. You've got to have that excitement. Let's just start, let's start fresh today. Let's just start fresh. You may say, well, I made a lot of mistakes last year. I did a lot of foolish things. But you know what? When the date changes, all that is in the past. I don't even care what it was yesterday. Somebody said, well, brother, or, or Pastor Bill, it was, I was, uh, I was at a party last night. I got drunk. I'm sorry. It was foolish. It was stupid. You know what? That don't exist. That don't exist. When the date changes, all that is in your past. Right up to this moment. You see the past. Now I want you to hear that. I want you to hear all of it. I keep telling you I want you to hear this. That's because it seems important to me. But the past is one of the greatest blessings God ever created. The past. You see, when it's past, it's past. One scripture, well, there's several scriptures in the Bible that says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass away. The past is gone. You see, don't hang up. Don't get hung up onto the past. Let it go. Forget it. Forget it. It's over. Good, bad, or indifferent. It's over. One of the greatest texts in the Bible is this. The scripture reads, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. One of the greatest scriptures in the Bible, I think. Forgetting all those things in the past. Forget it. You know, if you spent most of your life blaming somebody in your past for why you're going through the things you experience in the present, forget it. Forget it. Forgetting those things which are, which are behind and reaching forth under those which are before. That is the way to live as a healthy-minded individual. That's how you do it right there. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. I remember uh, my dad used to, used to go to these little fellowship meetings. And I went because the people were interesting. They were, uh, they were peculiar people. In a little town in Illinois called Brooklyn, Illinois, they, they had a little church and they'd have a fellowship meeting. My dad, for whatever reason, loved to go down there. I, like I said, I used to love to go down and watch the people. But they had a, they had a river that flowed through this little, this little town. And I remember one day I was down there instead of in church, I was down there and 
and looking at the river. And I was leaning against the bridge, uh, the railing of the bridge, and, and I watched the current of the river below. And I saw a log, a, bit, a, a piece of driftwood, and it floated past on down the river. The surface of the river was smooth, but always it had been for a hundred or maybe a thousand years, the water slipped under the bridge. The river always flowed under the bridge. Watching the river that day, I made a discovery. I discovered an idea. Suddenly and yet quietly, I knew that everything in my life would someday pass under the bridge and be gone. Like the water that flowed underneath that bridge. And these words came to me, which I had heard my whole life, didn't understand it till then. It's water under the bridge. All of, all of my life, the idea served me well, and it, and it carried me through its water under the bridge. There were days and ways that were dark and not easy. Always when I had made a mistake that I couldn't be helped or I had lost something that I could never get to come again, I realized up until into my manhood, it's water under the bridge. From then on, I didn't worry about my mistakes after that. I learned from them, from the mistakes. I didn't let them get me down. Why? Because it was water under the bridge. God forgives our errors. Let me, let me explain it. God forgives our errors and God forgets our mistakes. So get rid of that whole idea that God's getting even with you for something. If God forgets, then we should forget. Forget that which is behind. Reach forward to that which is before and be enthousi enthusiastic about your life. It isn't going to be fun to walk away from, from those old uh, errors, those old dumb, stupid things that we did last year. You say, why? That's where we found our comfort. With just acting, acting ignorantly. Right now, there is a wonderful new year in which we're going to do better. And we're going to have a lot of excitement. And we're going to have a lot of joy in doing it well. You might say, well, what about all these problems that's going on? What about all these problems in the world? Look at the difficulties we're having in the world. How can anyone be excited or enthusiastic with all these problems? Well, let me ask you a question. When didn't we have problems? It's not new. When didn't we have problems? You can't wait to start being enthusiastic until there are no problems because you're still going to have the problems. Just remember the one thing that you've got. You are alive. You are alive. Don't be afraid. Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever. God will watch over you the rest of the way. I believe that with all my heart. No matter what, what your problems are or what your difficulties may be, God will, I remember John Moore in Rockford, Illinois used to sing, God will, God will be there for me. You see, it is well. It is well. I can't speak for you. For me, it is well with my soul. God will take care of me. He always has he always will. Trust God. Do the best you can. Play, what, play out whatever life deals you. If we all do that, I'm sure we'll have the time of our lives 
and live in that year that's ahead of us. You see, Romans 12 and 2 said this, be transformed by, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we've been talking about the past. Well, my little Kennisonism, you can hang it on the, on the fridge, whatever you want to do with it, is this. Now is the only time there is. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow never comes. All you have is right now. See, many people, uh, they wait. They wait for New Year's uh, to begin to make their resolutions and what they want to be and to do and to have from everything of what size they want to be, how much weight they want to lose, how much uh, they want to quit their smoking, they want to quit this, and they make these resolutions. But in this ministry, we teach you not to wait for a certain day or wait for a certain time of the year to change conditions. Don't wait for New Year's. Don't wait for New Year's. We teach you not to wait for somebody. Not to wait for something else to give you the good that you desire. You can get it yourself. We teach that now, right now, is the only time there is. The time to change your conditions for the better is right now and right here. Now is the time. Here is the place. This is a now ministry. I want to stress that to you. It is a now ministry. I'm a now teacher. And I'm telling you through the presence and power of the God in you, you can renew your way your way of the right here and the right now. You can do it. You can do it. Some of you, some of you buy, buy those lottery tickets every week. You don't expect to win. If you win a few dollars, you think you're really happy. No. If you're going to do something, do it all the way. Expect it. Expect it. You can change anything in your experiences. You can. You don't need me to do it. You don't need another teacher. You can change anything. You can change your life by changing your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you have a someday attitude? Many people don't want to change their thinking and they don't want to change their minds. People want to change everyone and everything around them, but not themselves. Well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. If you are waiting for someone else or something else to bring you success and prosperity to you, you will never, never succeed and prosper. If you're waiting for some day, Christians are good at that. To overcome your conditions, you're, you're going to be waiting a long, long, long time. Because when is Someday, I've heard of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I think Scarlett told me this, Saturday, Sunday, but she hadn't heard of someday, someday. You see, your someday attitude is the reason you haven't prospered and you would like to prosper. Quit waiting for that Someday, make up your mind today and the doors will open for you. I promise you it will. You see, the ideas in your mind are what cause you to, to succeed or talk uh, to fail, have prosperity or poverty, to have or, or not have that which you want. You are never going to get further in life than the ideas you have about yourself in your mind. Sure, did you come in here for a reason? Always to tell you it's over. It's over. Yeah. It's 12.30. You know, Sherry, Mike, I, I want to show you something. Mike Rangel said happy birthday. 
You, well, you just talked you know to what? Me. You know what all these are? Yeah, they're notes. Yeah. That you haven't got Do you realize how much I study for these notes? Well, maybe in 2023 you can up it 15 minutes, sir. Well, the boss has spoken. The boss has spoken. God love every one of you. And I do want to wish you a happy new year. And it's whatever you can make out of it. It's whatever you want to make out of it. It's not up to the government to take care of you. It's not up to your, your job. It's not up to friends, family. You have all the power that you need to be successful. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time you've given us this morning. And I ask that you cause this to be a strength unto us. Let it, let it revigorate and excite us. Let, it, let this put an enthusiasm inside of us that nothing will be withheld from us. I ask for healing. I ask for blessing. I ask for success and prosperity for every person that has ears to hear what your scriptures would say. And I'll give you all the praise. Amen. Well, here we started off a new year. Yes, we always do. That's right. I love you. Sherry loves you. God loves you. And God bless America. We'll be here next week. Have a great week.